Hi, welcome back for another review. And unfortunately for me though, this book was cursed. Despite my um, overall negative review of the book as a whole, the ideas and story behind it are actually really cool and interesting. So the idea is what happens when the sword of power instead of choosing King Arthur, chooses a queen. So in the story, we follow Nimue. And right from the get-go, we're in her village where it's being attacked and burnt to the ground by the holy men of the church trying to cleanse the fey folk of their witchcraft. And we follow Nimue as on her quest basically for revenge, for survival, both for her and her people. Now, on the surface, this story just sounds right up my alley and is just so cool and a fresh new take on the story of King Arthur. And that's what frustrated me most about this book is with this amazing story, you just want to really explore and understand it completely. But the book just was so rushed and so choppy that it felt more like, okay, here's the bullet point version of the story instead of a flowing, immersive um, tale it could have been. With the problem of the story being rushed, it obviously also made the character growth feel rushed. Starting with Nimue, at the very beginning, she talks about how she has this natural connection to the hidden, which is the magic source for the Fae. Um, she talks about how she has no control over it. It comes over her in a tidal wave. She literally feels sick to her stomach. Her head is buzzing, and she just can't control it. But then a couple chapters later, she's already starting to manipulate this, this hidden um, in a way that benefits her um, at the time that she needs it. And then later on, she gets a little piece of advice from another character, and she's now becoming an expert in the hidden and controlling it. So it just felt so rushed and unrealistic to me, like I was just being dragged along her story. Along with this insta-power trope, there's also an insta-love story for her where, you know, they literally lock eyes from across the way, and that's it. So that also felt very rushed and unrealistic. Along with the character of Nimue, um, there's all of these extra side characters like just shoved into this short book. And, you know, they're there for a chapter or two and they're there for a very specific reason and a very, I don't know, just very forced role in the story. And then we don't hear from them for the rest of the book. So it just felt very crowded and unnecessary. Along with the characters feeling very crowded, the, uh, the different kingdoms and the different storylines and perspectives also felt very crowded. So we're with Nimue and the main storyline. And, you know, they're at point A and they need to get to point B. So... In the book, it starts out describing point A and what they need to do. And then the next chapter, it cuts to a whole new part of the world, a new kingdom, a new um, royal court. And then when we come back to point B, we're just there. <laughs> the transition between those two points is gone. And, of course, with it being that choppy, it just didn't feel real. It just felt like, okay, this is how it is, and... You don't need to know what happened in between, which really felt unnecessary because if the book would have just slowed down, and especially if this was a series instead of a standalone, you could have really just taken a breath, taken your time, and described one storyline for more than a chapter or two. All of the different characters, all of the different kingdoms, and the world building if that were drawn out and explained and explored more in a longer book series, this could have been 
the most amazing story I've heard about King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table, like in a whole new setting, in a whole new way. But we just, as a reader, I needed the time to really connect and care about what's going on instead of just getting the bullet point version. And this rush storyline problem only got worse uh, towards the end of the book. And I mean exponentially worse. Like the last 20 pages, there was still a lot left to be resolved. And I was thinking, there's no way this um, is just one book. There has to be a sequel. How can they possibly um, finish it in these 20 pages? But, you know, the boulder kept rolling down the hill faster and faster and faster. And there were a lot of name drops. Um, we know that, you know, there's characters like Lancelot and Guinevere that play a part in the original um, story, but we don't get to hear from them throughout this whole book until like at the very end, like a lot of those names start just getting dropped one right after the other until abruptly the story is done. And it just, it was so overwhelming and rushed that I didn't really care. Like, I didn't have time for, oh my gosh, that's who this character was. I it didn't have time to sink in and I didn't feel a big impact from it because it was so rushed. I just hope that the Netflix TV show <laughs> does a better job and I hardly ever say that. Usually I'm hoping the TV show or the movie will be just as good and won't cut as much stuff out of the book. But I feel that um, the book format is already in storyboard form that <laughs> what Netflix needs to work on is the transitions between those storyboard plot lines. So here's hoping that the TV show is better than the book. I never thought I would say that. So let me know down in the comments how many of you have read it or are planning to read it before watching the show. Uh, let me know how you guys are feeling. Remember, if you like big stories and you cannot lie, go ahead and like and subscribe.